Hello and welcome to the Computing and Social Responsibility course. This is CS230 and this is the special summer edition of it, summer 2020. And this course will run for eight weeks from June 1st to August 1st. And um, this video um, is designed to welcome you to the course and to show you where, um, you know, to show you where the uh, uh, materials are and how to navigate it and, and also to go over the syllabus. If you click on the syllabus link in the course, it'll take you to the main homepage for the syllabus and you will notice that um, there is uh, quite a quite a lot of detail here. Uh, you can also download it so that you can read it offline and uh, if you download it, the syllabus will come up in a Word file. And at the top of the syllabus, you'll find my information. If you have any questions, problems, or concerns throughout the course, please don't hesitate to contact me. My email address is right here at the top. It's barbara.hacker at csueastbay.edu. Um, you may also uh, contact me individually uh, during my office hours, which is Monday through Friday from 8 to 10 a.m. or by appointment. Uh, the way you get to my office hours is you send me an email message and I give you a link to Skype or to Zoom and we connect electronically. I will not be in the office on campus for this summer. I will be available remotely via Zoom or Skype. I actually prefer Skype because it's a little bit more personal. Uh, but give me a, send me a message, make an appointment. Um, I prefer Monday through Thursday actually. Fridays are a tough day uh, only because lots of students wait till the end of the week before they start doing work. Um, so the earlier in the week you can catch me, the easier it is and the more time I can spend with you on, a, on an individual basis. Um, so this course will run for eight weeks and it is running in an asynchronous environment. So asynchronous means that it is available on the web only, web online only. You don't have to come to campus for anything and there's no weekly lecture videos that you have to attend in person or electronically in a synchronized fashion. That means they will not be holding Zoom sessions where you actually have to connect at a certain time of day for a certain number of hours in a synchronous kind of format. Um, instead, I'm going to run this on a seven-day calendar, Monday through Sunday. And uh, each week, and I'll show it momentarily when I look at Blackboard, you'll have to deliver, you'll have to conduct uh, some reading, um, you'll have to watch some videos and deliver some assignments to me on a weekly basis when you can fit it into your schedule. Um, so you can work asynchronously, which means you can reply to things and do stuff at your own schedule on your own timeline. Even the midterm and also the final exam are set up to run this way as well. Um, so I will discuss that momentarily. So this course will cover the social impact and ethical aspects of computing. We'll look at a lot of ethical issues when it comes to technology. We'll look at privacy, security, personal property rights, uh, intellectual property, social networking, net neutrality, a bunch of different topics. And you will need to get the textbook for the course. Um, you have two choices, however. There's two editions of the book. The book is called A Gift of Fire. If you cut and paste this and stick it into a web browser, you'll see it. Um, it's by uh, Sarah Bass. Um, there's a fourth and a fifth edition. I don't, it, I don't care which version you get. Um, you can actually find the fourth edition electronically online. Um, the fifth edition you can buy in a bookstore or get, um, you know, just Google the ISBN and you'll find it. You do not need the fifth edition for this class. If it is cheaper for you to get the fourth edition, then go ahead and get that. The fifth edition was just out a couple years ago. The book didn't really change that much and there are no assignments that are out of the book, so you don't have to worry about um, having a particular edition of the book. But you do want to get the book because most of the reading and uh, material is from the book. So I highly recommend, and if you want to be successful in this class, it is kind of imperative that you get the book. Uh, but you can get the fourth edition or the fifth edition. I would not go any lower than the fourth because um, you know, the book has changed a little bit since the fourth, uh, or prior to the fourth. But the fourth or the fifth would be appropriate. I also put the um, materials on a thir on a website, actually. Um, and the website URL, you can actually find from the syllabus link. It says course material files also available here. 
I put them out here at this link and you can just click on the link and bookmark it um, just in case Blackboard goes down or there's an issue accessing something from Blackboard or you can't find something you're looking for, you can always get it from this website as well. This is my personal website that I use for previous classes. Um, so you'll find, uh, if you backtrack out of that directory, you'll find previous sections of this course that were taught um, years ago and you'll find the current term and the current two classes that are I'm running for the summer which are uh, CS 230 and CS 311 the programming language concepts course the materials however in Blackboard have changed significantly since the last term so I would use Blackboard as your first source for the materials and if you are looking for something and you just can't find it, go to the website as a secondary source. Uh, but the video links and things on the weekly schedule in the Blackboard are not on the website. So it's better to use Blackboard as your primary access for the course materials and only in an emergency resort to the old fashioned website. So in this class, um, the grading is uh, fairly straightforward. We have these exploration assignments, which are really, they're not programming assignments, they're mostly writing assignments, um, where you're gonna explore different concepts. Um, they're little assignments, they're only worth three points each, and there's seven of them for a total of 21 points in the course. And there will also be a midterm and a final exam. The midterm will happen halfway through the course, the final exam will happen at the end, both exams will be online through Blackboard and you'll be given a five day window to take them in. I will show you that in a few minutes. We also have a 29 or you know practically 30% term paper uh, that you'll have to write. And the term paper is discussed below. I'm not gonna bombard you with the term paper details right now, but you do wanna start thinking about a topic. I highly recommend reading through um, reading through the syllabus here and uh, reading the description of the term paper, which is at the bottom. There's two choices uh, for the term paper. Uh, one of them is to write a research paper. The other one is to write a uh, ethical scenario. I will give you some more information on that as we uh, get through the course. For the purposes of, of, of the first topic, you'll need to kind of think about what it is, and you probably could start thinking about it from day one. What topic related to ethics and computers and computing and, or technology are you most interested in? So you might find that the book is a good source to generate a topic. I can't give you the topic. You have to pick it out yourself. Um, previous students have done things like net neutrality or crime on the internet or social media and ethics or uh, bullying. Um, there's a wide variety of topics that you can select from. When you submit your topic, I will let you know if it's appropriate. Um, and that, but that's not going to come from the, from the next uh, week or so. Um, so you can see it in the also in the syllabus here, and let me just show you the downloaded version of it because the font's a bit bigger in this video. Um, the dates for all of the assignment submissions and the midterm and the final are in the syllabus. As with all of your other courses, you, you should adhere to the academic dishonesty standards, which means you're not supposed to cut and paste or copy assignments from other students and things of that nature. Um, so you have the seven exploration assignments, you have the term paper, you have a midterm, and you have a final exam. So that's how it's broken out. There isn't a class participation grade and there's no posting of weekly or bi-weekly discussion questions or anything of that nature as well. Um, it's pretty much a asynchronous, hands-on, um, perform work with no busy work um, component. Um, the late policy, I will accept assignments all the way up until July 27th. I'm not going to count things late if you turn them in late, but you should stick to the schedule. So for the exams, there's two exams. There's a midterm and there's a final exam. So for the midterm exam, it will be due on June 28th. And the final exam, it will be due on June 31st. Both of the exams will be given to you um, via Blackboard using the Respondus Lockdown web browser, but you do not have to use a webcam or any other software. So you just need to download the free re re Respondus, um, the uh, Lockdown browser, 
and run the exam through the lockdown browser. If you look at the course materials, actually, um, if you click on course materials in the classroom, you'll see the exam described here, midterm exam, and then you have a final exam down here. You're given a five day window to take the exam in. So it um, will be done online and the exam will last for two hours and both exams will be, will be two hours in length and uh, you'll be able to pick any two hours in the five day window. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility to schedule the exam when you're, you know, feeling like you're confident and you're feeling like this is the day I'm going to take the test. And uh, the window, for example, for the final exam will be during the final exam week, which is July 27th through the 31st. The exam window for the midterm will be June 22nd through the 28th. This is an eight week class, so it will fly by quickly. And in the course materials, you'll see some items in green and you'll see some items in black. The items in green right now are the ones that are ready. They're finished. For example, if you click on week one, you'll see the completed week one materials. Um, so you'll have um, a little to-do list at the top and you know, you'll have some links to click on for assignment number one and you'll have some uh, readings to do and you'll have some videos to watch, which is pretty much the format for the other weeks as well. The reason why some of them are in black is because they're not ready yet. If you click on the midterm exam, it comes up empty as an example. It will be ready uh, within the next four weeks, obviously, um, so that you can take it. But you can sort of thumb through the weeks to see what's gonna be, for example, week five is not done yet. There are no videos and half the reading is missing, uh, but you can sort of see the exam schedule and the assignment schedule. You can also go down to the bottom of the course content and see this button down here where it says submit class assignments. And so it'll show you, and these are the word files that have the assignment descriptions in them. So this is where you would submit assignment number one, assignment number two, assignment number three, assignment number four, et cetera, and so forth. Here's your topic selection. It's gonna be due on June 14th and your uh, research paper link. And uh, you'll be able to read about it in the course materials, but then if you wanted to, you could just quickly go to the submit class assignments and you know, download the assignment description. For example, I just clicked on um, program one dot doc, and uh, here's the assignment. This is a, it's not really a programming assignment. It's an assignment um, that you're going to uh, write a short essay. Um, I probably should change that. So it just says assignment instead of programming assignment. I'm used to teaching programming courses, as you can probably tell. Um, but write a short essay, roughly 300 words about a topic related to computer technology. Um, uh, part two, answering questions. Um, and so you'll, you'll see that you'll be able to read the description and then you'll also be able to respond um, with a, a file that you'll be able to upload to the class to submit the assignment. For example, if I click on the assignment, you'll see the due date and you'll see the submission area. So I tried to make this as straightforward as possible so that you can navigate, not only navigate, but find the course materials and be able to um, figure out how to submit assignments and, and things like that. Um, now, obviously, um, this will get more populated as we go through the course. So for week number one, what you're going to want to do is click on the week one. And this is ready for you. It's green and perform the activities that are in the week one module. And as long as you have performed the activities and have submitted what you need to submit and nothing is really due for the week week one, because if you look in the syllabus schedule, you'll see nothing is really due until the third, to, till the second week of class, excuse me. Um, this course is a 16 week class um, and it is uh, broken out um, into an eight week schedule for the special summer session. So you have the same content as you'd normally have in a 16 week class, but it is condensed down into only eight weeks. So module one and module two, which would normally be week one and week two are actually week one. So this is the first week, this is the second week. So you can sort of see things are gonna pile up on you because we're doing an, a 16 week class in only eight weeks. Uh, that's why it's a good idea to stay on top of things. And that's why all of the materials are going to be available 
for you way ahead of time. So you can have the freedom of working ahead if you'd like. Um, so make sure, you know, you kind of look at your calendar and if you've got like some vacation plans or something coming up, um, schedule the, schedule the assignments and schedule the work around your schedule. As long as everything is submitted by the last day of class, um, in the deadline here, which is July 27th nothing will be counted late. But you're more than welcome to submit items early if you'd like. Um, it's just that that would be the last date I would be able to accept anything late. So as you can see, um, the schedule is, uh, is available for you. The class is laid out. I hope that there aren't any questions. If there are some questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. I've also set up a discussion board with uh, student open discussion questions and then questions about assignment one, two, three, questions about the midterm, questions about the final. So hopefully um, we can all work together. And uh, if you have a question, most likely another student in the class might have the same question or better yet, they might have the answer. Um, so we can uh, work together to, to sort of get things done. Um, so this is the downloaded uh, Word file. The schedule looks uh, a little cleaner, I think, in it. It's a pretty, pretty even schedule. Um, I tried to leave the midterm week open a bit. Um, so we do have an assignment three that's due. So, But I would highly recommend working at your own pace as you go through the assignments. And I would also recommend reading the term paper description. I'm not going to read it to you. I'm going to assume you guys can read it on your own. And then uh, I will also give you some advice on the project selection, on the topic you've selected once you have submitted your selection. So, and that is uh, only worth four points, but it's a significant four points. So make sure to make sure to submit the topic selection on time so you can get a good start on the on the paper as well. So I hope that you enjoy the class. It will be a fast summer, uh, but hopefully it'll be a fun one. And hopefully um, you'll be able to navigate through everything. And please do not hesitate to contact me. And I'd like to take this opportunity in this video to basically just welcome you. So welcome to the class and I hope you enjoy it. And uh, I do want to hear from you if you have a problem or a question. Um, so please don't hesitate to contact me. All right, thanks for watching the first video.